Dice Combat is the game I made for the 2022 GMTK Game Jam. It's been a while since the jam, so why am I bothering to make a video on it now? The game I made wasn't especially outstanding. It didn't score very well, nor did it look particularly pretty. However, there was one key part of the game's development that I've never experienced before. Using the Godot game engine. How's it going everybody? I'm Lewis, also known as Scaffolds. Usually I use my own engine to create games, however over the last year or so I've been rewriting it and it wasn't ready for the GMTK game jam. If I didn't want to miss out on the jam, that meant I had to use another engine, something I've not done properly in years. I considered engines I've used in the past, such as Unreal and Unity, however in the end I decided to try an engine I've never used before, Godot. Since I got into watching devlogs, I've seen plenty of great projects made with Godot and many channels that have sprung up to advocate for it. So I figured why not try it out in the jam, it could be fun. When the theme was announced as Roll of the Dice, I knew I wanted the gameplay to involve physical dice that caused a random effect. I thought that could make a fun action roguelike where you fight through tiers of enemies, collecting dice faces and building better dice. That would have been awesome. However, I had less than 48 hours to not only create the game, but understand the engine as well. In the end, I boiled down the game idea to a combat prototype, where you throw dice at enemies and random effects happen. I also decided to use Kenny NL's assets and creature mixer for the art, and opengameart.org for sound and music. That all meant I could really focus on Godot itself and finishing the prototype. The prototype needed a player, basic enemies and dice effects. I figured that'd be fairly easy to do, so I launched Godot with a strong sense of confidence and ignorance. I began by looking at the example projects Godot comes with. There are loads of projects covering different things you can do with the engine, from first person shooters to 2D platformers. I was quite impressed with the selection and tried to look for an example that fit my game. Unfortunately, this is when I realized I'd made a mistake launching an example project without the basic understanding of the engine. I struggled to navigate between scenes, objects and code. To help, I decided to follow the starter tutorials in the Godot documentation. This will give me knowledge of the engine UI and the code. Once I understood the basics of the engine, building the prototype was a fairly quick process. The player moves around with the arrow or WASD keys. Enemies head towards the player and if they touch, then the player takes damage. The player can also press space to roll dice. Once the dice are rolled, an effect and scale is chosen. Any enemies trapped between the player and dice will have that effect applied to them. The very first effects I made were damage, healing and enemy duplication to keep you on your toes. Unfortunately, rolling low damage wasn't very fun, so I added one final effect to instantly kill any enemies trapped between the player and dice. To finish off the prototype, I added a game background, a start menu, coins for keeping score, health bars and a power indicator. All of these small changes really improved the feel of the game, and I submitted it to the jam. So Godot, is it worth using? Absolutely, I think it's a really great engine, and will continue to see it grow especially in the indie space. For beginners it's easy to get into. There are loads of tutorials and examples you can access, as well as clear documentation for everything in the engine that you can open directly from the editor. I love that it's open source, however I couldn't find a direct link to the source code in the editor. Perhaps that could be a future improvement. GDScript is easy to learn. It shares similarities with Python, which is many people's first programming language. I also liked how its dollar notation works for getting nodes. It very much reminds me of jQuery. Personally, I picked GDScript up very quickly. My only real concern was the naming of certain functions. For example, if you want to convert radians to degrees, you use the rad to deg function. Both words are shortened and it uses the literal number 2. I find using full words, so radians to degrees, makes it significantly easier to read for anyone using the code. There were also some inconsistent tensors in the function names. For example, if you want to normalize a vector, you call the vector normalized function. Again, I find the present tense of an action, so vector normalize, significantly easier to read for anyone using the code. This is simply because I think it's more obvious of what the code is doing as opposed to what it could have done. 
Looking ahead, I'm still going to continue using my own game engine. However, I really enjoyed trying Godot. A major advantage it has over my engine are HTML builds. A lot more people played the game simply from having it available in the browser, and for game jams, that is an incredibly valuable feature to have. The game was played over 100 times, and I received so much more feedback than any of my previous game jam games. I don't think the prototype is worth continuing with, but I really enjoyed the jam and learning Godot. I hope you've enjoyed watching this devlog for my first Godot game, Dice Combat. I've had a number of delays getting this one out, initially because I wanted to focus on releasing my museum builder demo, but then a bunch of other things happened, including moving house and some things I'll touch on in my next video. Make sure you're subscribed to get notified when I release that. Don't forget to leave the video a like and comment to give me any feedback. Thanks for watching, goodbye.